So where are you in your life? Is it your fate or destiny to be where you are? What decisions did you make? What choices did you make to be where you are? Do you think that if you went back in time, you would make the same choices or different choices? And I think that ultimately is what Lost is all about. A long time ago, in a different time, Ben and Charles or somebody else discovered this place where you could go back in time. The only thing was you weren't guaranteed to when you were going to go back in time. And you would then have to live your life and either make the same choices because that's the way time played out or try and change the choices that you make, which ultimately, as the show tells us, is impossible to do. Now, this is what I think has happened. The island has played out its life, and Ben and Charles know what the end game is, and it's a grisly, ugly end that played out to the Valenzetti equation. And their entire existence now is based upon changing something that happens to prevent this horrific end. And it's a game. They're wealthy people. They can come and go. They understand the island. But there's a price to going back to the island, as we found out in this episode. Ben is all beat up, and he's bloodied, and he's injured in the crash. So clearly he has paid a price to go back and try and change it again. Locke, for example, he's constantly made bad choices, and yet apparently it is his ultimate destiny and fate to be crippled and in a wheelchair. And that ultimate existence and the fact that it has played out again and again and again and again force him to the moment where he contemplates committing suicide. Think of how many people have done that. The woman on the freighter who read the book upside down. Desmond, one of the most pure characters in the show, actually considered killing himself until, boop, the record stopped skipping and his life changed. Something beyond his control changed his life. But that is the way the timeline went. And so far, no one has been able to change the timeline. Something happened in the crash, which meant for Jack, Hurley, and Kate to be at a different time than those who crashed. And those people who crashed in the secondary plane, Caesar and the, the woman who was the cop, they're living out their episode of Lost. Now, there are all these things going on, all these crisscrossings in time. Remember when Mrs. Hawking showed Jack the book for the Ajira Flight 316? There wasn't just one flight. There were hundreds of them, maybe thousands of them. Those, I think, are the whispers. People passing through time, watching others make critical choices in their life and commenting about those choices that they make. Like Sawyer was able to watch Claire give birth with Kate, but not comment on it, yet they were talking in the background. They were sort of whispering. So now, here is our group of Losties playing out this one game, but they have been involved in so many others, and I think we're going to find out that they lived in actually different time frames, because when they went back to live their life over again, they went to different times. And yet they still made the same decisions that bring them to the ultimate point of the show, which is the end. Now, Ben and Charles Widmore, who's good, who's bad, we don't know. They both could be lying. But the fact of the matter is, Widmore put the camera in the desert to see who was going to pop up next because he wants to control the game. Question is, though, the camera was all rusted, which means it's been there for a very long time. Now, Widmore and Abaddon, who's a time coach, I think, is the single reason why Ben has to kill him. He's just sick and tired of Charles helping things. But it's what Charles Widmore did that got Ben out in the open. He's available to be had if Charles Widmore can find him. So you have all these different things. And then you have Mrs. Hawking, who I think is sort of like the commissioner of the league. She doesn't play either side of the fence. She's just running the whole thing. Somehow, she got put in control because her son understood the time-space continuum or whatever it is. And now she's just making sure that time goes according to plan. The only thing is, is that Ben and Charles know that the big end game is not what they want. Whether that's death, this place is death, and they want to prevent their own death, or something worse, global, because we've seen all this nuclear stuff, is something that they want to prevent. So the island was pure at one point, and now it's been polluted by man. All these infiltrations, the bomb, the this, the that, greed, uh, lying, it's, it's ultimately been polluted and maybe on the verge of destruction. And then you have Locke's toes. Is it possible that they went out of their way to show you the four toes because he's one of the original people on the island and his life is just so desperate and misguided with bad decisions that he's actually the one who's been forced over the course of time to just keep going on and on and on to the point where this spiritual man is broken down to the point of committing suicide which is the ultimate worst act that anyone in humankind could consider. So there you go. Next week we have Lafleur. And the lives get lived over again, I think. Thanks for joining us.